Hi, I'm Rod from EB Power, and today we're just doing a little bit of a, a scientific test because uh, we sell these, these uh, lithium batteries and I quite often get asked, uh, you know, like people saying, well, what charges work and what, what charges don't? I've been told, they say to me, I've been told that CTEC charges, for example, the standard lead acid charger won't work with a lithium battery, it's going to bugger it up, the smoke's going to come out, it'll shorten its life and all of that stuff. And um, my short answer is, I don't know, but, you know, we're, we're about to find out, so we'll do a little experiment. Now, my mate um, Peter has kindly lent his, his C-Tech out of the caravan, and he's been told that he has to upgrade this, this lead acid C-Tech charger to one of these um, super amazing C-Tech chargers that has the, the lithium uh, lithium setting on it. So, it could be true, you know, like, like and, and it's certainly not going to hurt to have a, have a proper lithium charger, but there's a lot of information out there on the internet and a lot of um, misinformation, I might say, as well. So, what we're going to do is we've, we've set up this this uh, high-tech test rig here, according to this here wiring diagram, that one there, you got that? Mm -hmm. And it, it, apparently it's going to do uh, this charging curve here. Now, I guess the thing that's in question is this desulfation phase, you know, is that going to wreak havoc with the battery? And probably the only way we're really going to know that is probably to run the battery flat and, and, and recharge it, which we can do. You know, we can do anything we want. Uh, but for now, we've got a, a battery that's charged at about, um, it's, it's about 98%. So it's nearly full, but not quite. And we've got here a starter battery as per the diagram. <clears throat> also a lithium starter battery. And we have our alternator. Okay. Yeah. Folks alternator, which is charging our starter battery, and that's charging at 27 amp at the minute. And so I've just got to make the last connection. So I'll put that down while I do this. <clears throat> this is the point where we hope the smoke doesn't come out. That goes on there. I saw a little flash there, and now we've got power on our CTEC. And we've got, looks like we've got some alternator charging happening. So it's probably starting to ramp up a bit of charge into our battery. Let's check on our app here. There we go. So that's starting to, can you see that? Yep. That's charging at 20 amps at the minute. And our battery is actually, um, Oh, look at that. So the battery's already at 100%, but it's still only at 13.6 volts. So we just, we're just waiting for it to come up to, it's got to get past 14 volt for a lithium battery to be full. Now, according to their diagram, if I'm reading it correctly, this should charge to 14.4 volt and then start to taper the, the charge current. So that's what we're looking for. Um, you can see the voltage is starting to rise there now. So we'll come back in about five or 10 minutes uh, with an update. So here we go. Um, it's just hit 14.4 volt and the, the current's starting to drop back there to 10.7 amp, 10.4, 10.3. So the current's dropping back quite quickly, which is what you would expect with a lithium battery. <clears throat> and uh, because what happens is once the lithium battery reaches its full charge voltage the current will taper off very quickly they don't have a long absorption stage a very very short absorption stage basically with a lithium battery what you put into it is what you get out of it it's, it doesn't need this long absorption cycle like a lead acid battery needs so what we'll do is we'll just watch that current tapering for a bit and um, uh, we'll watch it offline and we'll come back again in 10-15 in minutes and see what's happening. Okay, so we're back again and it's only been uh, 20 minutes, 
for 30 minutes maybe and what's happened is we're at 14.2 volt it's it's gone to zero amps charging so um, that means that in our graph we started off in our bulk phase where it was a constant current charge at about 14.4 volt and then it, it um, dropped into the absorption stage which has been about 20 or 30 minutes where the current tapers off and it did a, a constant voltage it just held that held that voltage constant and so the current dropped off on the battery and as I explained before lithium batteries the current drops off very quickly uh, the, uh, it tapers off so the absorption stage doesn't need to be very long and the good thing is that the CTEC has actually recognized that and has not tried to keep the absorption stage going for hours and hours so it's actually cut back and it's now entered into the float stage so the voltage the voltage will actually drop back to 13.6 volt thereabouts and um, uh, it'll just sit there until it reaches this pulse, pulse stage. Now I understand the pulse stage it needs to sit for maybe um, so it just gives a pulse when necessary to keep the battery fully charged well that's certainly not going to hurt the um, lithium battery to to have a pulse every so often um, we probably won't get to that stage without a lot of watching and waiting so we might skip that stage but what I'd like to do now is, um, now that we've, we've dropped into float, we, we've verified that that's actually all working really good. Um, we're going to use this um, expensive and powerful inverter that's upside down, it's a Victron, and I'm going to connect a, um, like some kind of load up to that, like a toaster or something, and I'm going to run this battery dead flat. So we'll run that battery till it cuts out so that we can test this initial stage to see if which is the initial stage here if you bring, bring it close up yeah. um, to see it is to see if it does that desulfation um, and uh, that's probably the stage that that concerns people most is, is what's going to happen is it going to try and drive the voltage really high now my thought on, on it which is just my hypothesis which is yet to be proved is that even though it will try the desulfation, it won't be able to drive the voltage high on the battery. So it'll just be like an initial charging sta stage where it'll try to pulse, but the battery will actually, because lithium batteries will absorb so much current that if, if the charge even charges at its maximum, which is 20 amps, the lithium is just gonna soak that straight up. So it won't actually be able to do that stage. But that's just my idea, which is yet to be proven. So that will be the next stage. We'll, we'll plug in this beast and get that all working and we'll, we'll run our battery flat. Okay, so we've, um, we've drained our battery flat. We've actually drained it till, you know, this, it's, it's cut out. And I can see from the app here, um, it's just picking up one other battery at the moment, but it's not picking up this one. So, um, the app won't connect because the battery's battery's flat. The, the, the BMS has actually cut the battery uh, power off. So it's not that the it's not that the cell's totally flat. In these batteries, they have an internal battery management system. So the BMS actually cuts off the output. It's not not that the cells themselves have actually gone dead flat. That would be that would be bad. And so we'll just verify that with the multimeter here. If you get a close up on it. And um, that way then. So we've got 1.8 volts showing on the output of the battery. So now the trick is to try and get it alive again using the CTEC charger. So I shall connect up CTEC here. We've still got our other charger going up there, charging this start battery. That's what's making the noise in the background. Um, so I'll co connect up the CTEC. I saw a flash then of light. But, oh, something's happening. So it's picked up the alternator input. or picked up the input from that battery, but there's nothing happening on the output. 
it's um, it's not trying to charge the battery at all. So this is a common situation with smart battery chargers. They need to see a voltage on, on their output for them to start charging. So if, if the battery's at a very low voltage, this is actually not going to start charging. So we need to find another way to, to get the battery started. And it just so happens that I have a charger up here. That's a, a specialised lithium charger. And let's see what that does. Negative to negative, positive to positive. So straight away that started to charge the battery. And you see what's happened here? So that's sort of given it a kick in the guts, and now the CTEC's starting to charge. So I'll just turn that one off and disconnect that. Get that out of the way. <laughs> And the CTEC's continuing to charge now. So what it just needed was a little bit of a... The output had been cut off and it wouldn't allow any more discharge. But the, the, the CTEC couldn't... The, the smart charger couldn't pick up that the, the, there was a battery connected so it wouldn't start charging. This is a common issue with smart chargers and lithium batteries. So you need to find some way to get some charge into the battery. Now it's been said to me by a couple of different people why don't you just connect it to another battery, you know, like a fully charged battery? I'd, I'd say that's probably about the, the most dangerous thing you can do because it's sure it'll get it started, but then it'll start cranking amps in, you know, as fast as it can possibly go, and it'll probably seize up the the current limit either, either on one battery or the other. And that, quite apart from that, uh, you know, doing a heavy charge into very flat lithium batteries is not not a good idea. So I don't recommend that. I don't know who does, um, yeah, but if they're well informed, you know, go with it. But I, I wouldn't do that. So let's see what's happening now. So we're up to 11.63 volts off our CTEC charger. And let's see if our app has come back to life. hasn't picked it up yet. Let me restart the app. Maybe these are to be restarted. There you go. So it has, it's picked it up. Lithium battery one. Q lithium one. And obviously it's still on 0% state of charge. And it's at 11.7 volt. And it's charging at 20 amp. So I can see it doesn't seem to be doing, at least that I can see, it doesn't seem to be doing this, I'm not sure, this desulfation phase. Because remember this is a lead acid charger, so it should be thinking it's charging a very flat battery. Um, and it should be pulsing. So it should be trying to pulse up to a high voltage which of course it's not going to be able to because it's only a 20 amp charger you can only put 20 amps in you can't increase the voltage <laughs> unless you put like 200 amps in you know so it's just that that part of it's just not gonna not gonna run as far as I can see um, but uh, maybe it will maybe it will switch off so what we'll do is I'll, I'll just keep a bit of an eye on it for the next um, half hour while it's doing that charge at, at the, the low end of the charge and see what's happening. But so far, it looks like it's perfectly okay for charging lithium batteries, you know, at least our lithium batteries. So Gav's just had the um, bright idea to try a small battery to get the big battery started. So we were having trouble, <clears throat> so what we've done is we've actually drained the battery flat again. Um, and to verify that, well, to verify it, 
We'll check the voltage on the battery. Oops, get the probes the right way around. That's at one volt now. So we'll connect up our CTEC charger. <clears throat> and as we expect, it's not charging. So there's still no output there. So, what we're going to try and do is reboot the BMS on this battery by using one of these little little 9 volt batteries. This is highly experimental, we've never tried this before. So, there's a first time for everything. I'll put that on there like that. I'll lay that down somewhere where it's not going to do too much damage. And of course, you want to make sure you get the polarity right. So you want to check which side is plus, I guess, on the little 9 volt battery. And connect that to plus. This is all just an experiment. So it's, it's still not charging. But if we connect that to there, Nothing happens. Oh, yes, it does. Look at that. It's working. It suddenly started charging. I'll put them there so they don't touch together. Um, it looks like it suddenly started charging. Yes, and it's up to 10 volts. Hmm. So there you go. Stroke of genius, Gav. <laughs> We can, um, if, you're, if you're stuck in the middle of the bush and you've got a 9 volt battery, you can use that to reboot your, your lithium battery once it's been drained flat and your smart charger won't charge it anymore. So, final episode. Um, we charged the battery up using the CTEC and it's now at 100% state of charge and 14.6 volt. So it, it pumps it up maybe a little bit higher than, it, than I'd like, but 14.6 volt is within the range uh, for charging these batteries. One thing I did notice when um, we were charging is I got this um, high tech temperature probe and I noticed that the CTEC got up to uh, 68 degrees. So it's important to um, probably keep these in a well ventilated area when you're using them. But apart from that, it seems to work fine. It seems to go through all the stages. In fact, if you look at the, um, the manual for the lithium program, it's not that different to the one for the lead program. The only difference is this desulfation, which I did not witness. You know, we, we went from a completely flat battery up to 100% full and I didn't notice any change. So, as far as I can see, the, these CTEC chargers are perfectly fine for charging lithium batteries. <laughs>